It better be live. So help me. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Vitalcast number 84. I'm opening a tab to make sure we're actually live because who knows these days what YouTube does. <laughs> yes. No, uh, I think it was like two weeks ago. I went 20 minutes without realizing that it wasn't actually <sighs> streaming to YouTube, even though it said oh, it was. No. So, yeah, I'm just like panic checking right now. You're there. We can see it. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm like, please, please don't do this to me again, YouTube. There's only so many times. Or OBS. I should be blaming OBS, not YouTube by any means. But, yeah. Both. Blame both. Yeah. That yeah. happened to us once when we were filming a reaction to an anime, and OBS just decided not to record the full thing. I, I've had that happen back in uh, Volume 4. It was the Crow mm. versus Tyrion fight. And it, but I had one like recording mistake that worked. So it recorded the episode footage with my voiceover, but it didn't record like my face cam. Oh no. And so what I did was I did like a review of the episode, but then I'll put in the snippets of like when I'm screaming during the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, it, it was like a nice middle ground for a reaction video screw up. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta do work with what you do. got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do your yeah. best. <laughs> Dude, I, I have to say, that's like the stressful thing about doing reaction videos, is you only get the one take, so you need everything mm -hmm. perfect. It is. It, I get so anxious every time because I'm like, oh my god, what if something stops? And yeah. I don't even notice it stopped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the only thing that you can hear stopping is the camera. You yeah. hear that shutter go off, but everything else is like, it could stop whenever. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah i i had a mistake during the the premiere of volume seven's recording i accidentally had um the desktop audio go over my face cam audio <gasps> so i couldn't <laughs> so i couldn't toggle the episode volume like i normally yeah. could so i'm like oh yeah. man <laughs> like, uh... i I gone goofed it but i i, I learned yeah. yeah we you learn learn from your mistakes that's the important thing <laughs> yeah exactly so, um, where do you guys want to start with the chapter two discussion? Wherever you want. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I'm Throw okay. something at us. <laughs> yeah. Throw something at you. Uh, well, yeah. I wish I could say, oh, how about that kid that threw a rock at a drone? But that was the premiere episode. Um, yeah. I mean, they, they started out with getting arrested. Do you think that went on their permanent record? Um, I feel like no, because of winter. Yeah. She would see to it that none of them had a permanent record for that. Yeah. Scrubs, scrubs the tapes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's like, I can't let you blacken the Schnee name anymore. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, that, they'll be fine. Yang's the only one I think that actually like, will have an actual criminal record, sort of. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> well, well, how about Blake? I mean, during the time when Adam was kind of uh... leading her troop of the White Fang. I feel like no one will actually have known it was her, her, though. Yeah, like... Yeah. You know that got... bow is a great disguise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'll yeah. never know. With the mask, too. Yeah. You'll never know. It's like that oh, Clark no. Kent discussion, you know? People are like, oh, you know, no one will fall for that. And then we most definitely do. Yeah. I think uh, Henry Cavill actually, like, stood next to the Superman poster and like greeted people on the street in New York and they still couldn't like connect the two that he was the guy on the poster he was standing in front of. No. Oh and, my god. And I think all he was wearing was the glasses, if that. And yeah. people still struggled to like connect that. So who knows? Blake's yeah. Blake's <laughs> thing may work. Also I wanna say hi to the chat with Lee, Sir and Madam's Entertainment, Verif, Stoic, and Unicorn of War. Telling us to ah. throw the rocks at the military. so <laughs> Very effective. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. do crimes. As long as the rock is also a gun, I think we're fine. That's yeah, true. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's technically a grenade, isn't it, really? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe the rock is dust, you know? We just... <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, also, Verif is mentioning uh, Fruby. Did you see that? snippet on twitter no i did see it come up but i was we were actually playing D D right before this so it came Wise up on my choice. twitter 
wise choice. Okay, it was so a video. It's a stupid edit. Like, let me, <laughs> okay. let yeah. me just find it on Twitter real quick, um, just yeah. so I could like properly name the person, but also uh, tweet out the link to Vital Cast because I totally forgot to do that. Um, uh. <laughs> Eric Eric uh, Bador, um, he, so he works at Rooster Teeth. I don't know what he does. Um, his his looking at his profile, you almost think like it's a joke because you look on it, it says Eric Bador, and then the bio just says local dipshit, and it, <laughs> wow. it, it just ends there. And it looks like you you look at his profile picture. I'm pretty sure it's like a movie reference, and then it's just beer for his banner, and you're just like, oh, you know, this is a joke <laughs> or something. But it's just a 35 second clip of him sitting on a chair in a bl- dark room. He's like, Ruby needs stories and more side characters. And I, I think it's a weird way to like try to advertise the, a spinoff. Yeah. Yeah. Which. Um, <laughs> Probably going to happen at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Like we all knew that like with something as big as Ruby, a spinoff was going to happen. It was just a matter of when. Um, but yeah. if. Oh, come on, Twitter. Now Twitter's fighting me, but um, <laughs> it, it's weird because like when he said like it was the leader of the leader of the team is named Forrest and that the show's go- gonna be called Fruby. I swear, last weekend on Vitalcast, he was in the chat or someone because um, someone in the chat of Vitalcast said, "Hey, I got this like." ruby spin-off fan fiction idea the main character is named forrest he's the leader of a team i'm gonna call it fruby and i just kind of like saw that i'm like okay that's not about the discussion whatever you know just ignored it but now i'm like Ugh, cryptic messages yeah, <laughs> yeah it was like, like oh no because <laughs> when i saw fruby i'm like wait that looks familiar and then i listened to him he's like the main character is named forrest i'm like what <laughs> that's I'm like, great yeah, I'm like, what? I, I, I'm going crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, Brandon195 says, he voices Forrest, the guy who was in the prison van with them. Okay, so is it not oh. a spin? Oh, also, thank you, um, person with a super long username for subscribing, Semiko and Kamiko. Thank you. Um, but, yeah, I guess, I guess Forrest might have been that guy's name but what was that cryptic oh i think may- maybe he was advertising tomorrow's episode i don't know um also thank you for tweeting out that link <laughs> no <laughs> i realized i was like ah should i do that night we're literally live right now yeah <laughs> yeah uh, i'm just gonna throw in the hashtag and then tweet that because i am a great thing david it was a joke yeah, but he replied to the tweet with Rooster Teeth. He's like, people think this is a joke. Ha. Which makes me think <laughs> it's not a joke. I don't know. It was so cryptic and weird. Yeah. But, yeah. One of those that you just can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, Samantha Boino in the chat is saying, hi, cosplay moms. Hi, baby. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I love my children a lot. Yeah, and Thomas, Thomas is saying broke, Stark prequel, woke, Pokemon Chronicles, but Ruby. So now everyone gets an episode. Please. I love it. That would be cool. Put uh, money in that. That was actually like an idea I had for a spinoff. Um, or like how they could bring back the world of Rev- Remnant um, was to do like a, um, what do you call it? When like the, each episode in the season is unconnected to each other. And just do, like, mm-hmm. one-off character shorts that could, like, help world explore. And kind of, like, a- an idea I had for Mistral was, like, follow a kid just kind of, like, traveling through the marketplace. And then, like, getting chased by bandits and discovering parts of the criminal underworld in Mistral that we learned through the world of Remnant. But, like, story form. That would be cool. Yeah. yeah. I would like that. It's a good like... format to tell different stories from <laughs> the, the show yeah. without, like, ruining the plot. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it, it'd be good because like we we liked the world of Remnant but we I don't know it they they're probably not bringing it back now since it's been gone for a few volumes but you know I can't, if the Rooster Teeth like ever the feels ball. like giving the main story a break <laughs> yeah there's an idea to like keep us on something but yeah um but yeah anyway 
I guess Forrest was the guy in the van. I'm, I'm... He probably was credited. I, I don't remember him actually having a name, though, to be fair. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually pulling up the episode now just so I could go to the credits and be like, yeah. I need to is see this. Is he actually named at all, yeah. or is he just Shouty Man in Van? Yeah. <laughs> Shouty Man in Van. Man Van, <laughs> that's his name. <laughs> Van Van. Man Van. Okay, let's see. Come on, Rooster Teeth, load. Oh, hey, speaking of uh, the Rooster Teeth website... Um, I saw you guys kind of talk about it a little bit on Twitter, but that Bumblebee merch. What? Honestly, I I just hmm. <laughs> they it had so much potential. It yeah, it's disappointing. It really did because we've been waiting for B merch since, well, the start of Ruby. <laughs> Since they started making merch, there was always like, oh, here's Ruby and Weiss, or here's mm -hmm. Pierre and John, and Ren and Nora. There was never like Blake and Yang, regardless of whether there was going to be any romantic implications or not. There was just never any merchandise that had yeah. Yang and Blake on it. So then, like, when I heard that there was merchandise, I was really excited. And then I saw it, and I really liked the hoodie, at least. I love grey. Yeah, you do I have a lot sketches. of grey. <laughs> Gray's my favorite. Um, but Could then, you say like, your opinion on the hoodie is pretty gray too? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's like fifty five dollars for the hoodie. I would then have to pay like ten dollars shipping. Maybe it would arrive here. I'd have to pay like seventeen pounds for customs. So it would cost me like. 80 pounds ish, ish yeah. roughly 80? for one hoodie Holy yeah okay i'm opening now another tab now that i found like the credits <laughs> to that episode for just the shirt and be like is it really 55 it was the hoodie that was 55. the shirt was I mean, 30, sorry the, the hoodie yeah 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 i think it was 55 dollars i know for both of them it was a hundred dollars and like 16 cents or oh something. my gosh yeah okay so I i'm just... gonna put that on screen I just don't think that I, I'm just a bit disappointed because they really hyped it up. Yeah, yeah. and like, I was kind of expecting been... more when you see the quality art and stuff that's in the fandom. And I don't mind the manga things, but it's like a bit overdone now. They're cute, but like, why a white shirt? Why couldn't it have been a black shirt with yellow and purple detailing, or a yellow shirt with black art? Or yeah. literally any other colors apart from just a white shirt with black sketches on it. That yeah, will it never last. Super plain. Yeah, yeah. You, you think that with it being Bumblebee and a Ruby, a show where everyone's name is referencing a color, mm. they go with yeah. the colors that these characters are named after. Mm -hmm. it, 55 um, for this? I mean, I kind of look at the background and I'm like, why is the background cooler looking than the hoodie? Like, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the, the yellow brick wall or I guess yeah. the black brick wall with yellow yeah. paint, paint dribbled over cool it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like I love that. And don't get me wrong, I think the art is so, so cute. I just yeah. wish it was a different color. Yeah, just like colored Any the... Other color. Like, you could have had, like, the base hoodie be black, and then, like, the square background to the colors be yellow, maybe? Yeah. 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 Or, like, hot take. It could have been a black hoodie uh -huh. with, like, a white box around them, but then Yang was drawn in the opposite colors. Like, Yang and Blake were in the opposite colors, mm. so that Yang was purple Sorry. and Blake was yellow. Like, <laughs> someone thing about it. I'd much rather have had a Lenny plushie. The yeah, movement continues. That's what I want. <laughs> I want plushies of my grim. <laughs> my yeah. grim. That'll help me sleep at night. Man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I feel like a few of us reactors need to be in touch with their, like, merch team. Because this isn't the first time with Ruby merch recently that we've been like, yeah, that merch. Uh, mm. Not not as good as we would have liked, but. Yeah. Especially because it's something that people have been wanting and waiting for for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Th this is the first of it. It's like, can it only go up from here? Or is this <laughs> like the baseline? Yeah. Sure. I, I really hope this isn't like the, the last of it. You know, <laughs> maybe this will get the Pura doll mm -hmm. treatment where they're like, 
okay, we, we gone <laughs> goofed up. We'll take it down and put something superior back up when we have yeah. it. Like, I hope they don't look at the sales of it and think, oh, even though it's limited edition, it didn't sell that well, so people it, obviously It will have don't sold well. There was 300. It will have sold out, I reckon. 300, yeah. yeah. With that, how just, popular yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. Is it sold out on the website just now? Uh, no. Actually, let me see. I... No, none of the none of the sizes have sold out. Hmm. Okay. So there we go. Let's order a four XL. <laughs> Let's order five of them. That's two hundred and seventy five dollars. Oh then you guys have oh. to pay for shipping and customs. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh, hold on. No, I found something a lot better and cuter. A five dollar oh Yang plushie. Oh. It's on clearance. Oh it's on clearance. Save her. Adding to cart. <laughs> yeah. Continue I would. shopping. I already have well, a Blake. Wait, wait. No, can I get the whole team Ruby? Okay. Hello, Sweet. welcome to Vilecast. Oh, David goes yeah. shopping. <laughs> <laughs> the shopping simulator on the rest of the store. <laughs> Continue shopping. I gotta get that Weiss and Blake. I need the whole team because I only have um from the OG plush line, I only have yeah. Weiss and Blake. Yeah. The rest of them sold out. I just like tossed them aside like they were a wet paper towel. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what I do with the great ones, to be honest. She gets yeah. thrown about. <laughs> that quote there, that's the first video that I saw for a routine. What, the wet paper okay. towel? I'm yeah, gonna, the surgeon somewhere. I'm going to now hide the browser thing so I could like put in, safely put in my uh, mm -hmm. payment information. Detail. Yeah. <laughs> Not please. accidentally dox myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As someone that works in a bank, please. <laughs> wow, you just doxed yourself. Yeah. Okay. I didn't say what bank. There are many. That's true. Boom. Sweet. Okay, I'm getting my I'm getting my coupons entered because I'm a first member. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I like, like right. first buy. I do love that I've got like a first discount and it just means nothing when you have to ship it to the UK. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, oh here's a tiny bit off now, here's your customs charge on your postage. Here's five percent <sighs> off. That doesn't cover your shipping or your customs. Yeah. <laughs> Slap. Slap. Like it, if I got that Yang doll, it would like literally cost me probably like maybe the limited edition yeah no the the one that's on sale just oh, the five dollar it would probably yeah. cost me 75 percent more of the actual price just to get it here yeah. and pay for well, customs let's say for example it's oh, a five dollar flush yeah shipping's probably going to be about ten dollars so that's fifteen dollars dude and i was gonna say here, shipping for like me right now is seven dollars uh, yeah, yeah, I think you're under. I think you're underestimating. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say that's the slowest option. Seven dollars the shipping is it. Thank you, David. Yay! I have bought Woo! an entire Team Ruby. I am so wow. excited about that. Uh, I'm excited for you. Yeah. Just in the pictures when you get them. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, uh, "Can you find the great one?" Okay. Yeah, I'll find the great one. Let's see. She must be like free at this point. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> dude i i love pira so much i honestly will not be entirely too bothered um by it uh but yeah i gosh okay so funny thing when i bought these um original two plushies that i showed you my mom told me you're not allowed to let anyone know you own them and like she, and she was like you're infinite. not allowed yeah, she was like, you're not allowed to let anyone know them. They, No one can know you like Ruby. She they had to talk to me about this. And she was like, no, don't do it. Um, people will think you're weird and like yada, yada, yada. You'll never get a yeah. girlfriend, yada, yada, yada. Um, but joke's on her. I now have 2,000 subscribers thanks to Ruby. So <laughs> get dabbed on mum. Yeah. <laughs> Most parents have that chat. I remember my mom yeah. having Wait, a what? chat with me about um, like wow. sharing my cosplay pictures on my personal Facebook. I mean, I get um, that. Yeah, she was like, "Don't do that because people will think it's like really weird. They'll like misinterpret it. Like, yeah. just keep it to like just that alone, but don't publicly share it on your personal Facebook. Like, just mm -hmm. in case people like don't want to be friends with you and stuff." And now I'm like. Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, but then, yeah. then oh, my friend. But that's also to be fair because some of your your Ruby cosplays are a bit more like 
Oh no, she didn't mean those. This was before. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this was before the click. Morse code. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. didn't literally know how to say that without saying something bad. So I was like, I'll just click. Everyone will get it. <laughs> Everyone will understand. Yeah. If I just oh. click. Also, Thomas has a good point in the chat. He's like, I mean, how many people have gotten into relationships because of Ruby and other fandoms and cultures at this point? I know. Point? What losers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think a lot of it also had to do with, you know, I'm a guy. And she's like, you can't have plushies of girls. Like, yeah. that's not masculine. And it's like, chill. But, yeah. Anyway, should, should we, now that we're... <laughs> We, oh, also the great one has sold out forever ago. I'm yeah. pretty sure she she's well, not we have, on the website. We have our we have our friend. Yeah. How Bless. did you get her? Did your sister? I got buy her? got her for a bit of a meme birthday gift from someone. Yeah, I think it was your sister. And then I think Jora chewed on her a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh. She did. She likes I mean, who plushies. doesn't want to chew on Pira, honestly? Yeah, that was a bad joke. Destroyed one of my llamas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, back. Back to chapter two, now that we've been dunking oh, on yeah. t-shirts and <laughs> buying plushies. Holy crap. Um, Sorry for dunking on the t-shirts. <laughs> Don't. Sh should we uh, dunk on uh, Ironwood's plan a bit? Or, I don't yeah, know. Let's... What do you guys think of his plan? Instead of dunking it, let's just flush it straight down the toilet. It's a terrible <laughs> idea. Well, which I mean, part? Okay, to be fair, yeah, there's two parts. The second part is a terrible idea. The first part... I could get behind that. It's a good idea. It's a okay. great idea. Can you second elaborate part. on first part and second part? Oh, yeah. So the first part... <laughs> <laughs> the idea of putting, like, the satellite on top of Amity Coliseum. The, the tower on top mm. of it to make it a kind of satellite. Yeah. yeah. And then putting it up so that, like, even if one of the towers go down, they'll always have, like, global communication. Fantastic idea. Love mm -hmm. it. All about that. Second that. idea. Mm -mm. Take it away, babes. <laughs> Wait, what? Am I supposed to like agree with you or disagree with you here? No, you can give your opinion on the second half of the idea. Mm. Okay. I don't think it's going to play well. No, I definitely don't. Because it's either going to cause. I think I'm not sure exactly how he's planning to do it. Whether he's planning to release the information in Atlas first, like restrict the communications just to Atlas, see how it goes in Atlas, because it seems like he's prepared things in Atlas for panic. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure he's trying to announce it all at once to the world. Mm -hmm. um, if he is going to announce it all at once to the world, I'm like, boy, you say that you're going to defend the other kingdoms, but like, how much will you actually realistically be able to defend them? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. the Atlas monastery is huge, but not that huge. It's not, not a global that operation. Huge. Well, also, <laughs> yeah. not to mention, it won't be that huge, especially after defending Atlas from telling Atlas first. You know, yeah, yeah. They're not gonna make it out 100. percent So. No, and I mean, look at Mantle already. It's a mess. <laughs> yeah, Mantle's a mess. It's like, hey, dude, you can't even take care of like downstairs. How do you expect to take care of everything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just it's not. It's quite obviously being set up if it ever, to if it happens cause chaos and if it he doesn't get to do it himself what's just gonna push the button no, for him basically that's like, honestly my theory ironwood didn't tell you this but i'm gonna tell you this like yeah hmm. but he's gonna like he's gonna wait until <laughs> yeah. the amateur coliseum goes up so it's global communication and yeah tell the whole world yeah play it to salem's advantage by making it that it's like the atlas military and the world leaders were hiding this from you this whole time yeah. Oh, Can man. you trust all them? You know, you're all gonna panic. There's gonna yeah. be an influx of grim everywhere, and loads of people are gonna die. And it's no one like... will trust any of the governments. No. So, like, what's so, but like? <laughs> so basically, global scale what they did with Vital Cat, uh, the, the Vital Festival. Call a beacon. Yeah, yeah. basically. Absolutely. Because it's just like... more like what, unless Jessica Negri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let like... Jessica Negri have her moment. She's had her moment. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, I'm still holding out for, like, Cinder to make some sort of comeback, because I did really enjoy her during the first three volumes, but... Me too. These last few volumes, it's like, give Cinder something to do, other than be, like, chewed out by Salem. Yeah. But... I've kind of enjoyed it in a, a, a way, because it's like... <laughs> In the first three volumes, you saw her being like, yeah, I'm all, like, amazing and cool, and look at what I can do. 
And then it's like she lost all of that. Now yeah, she has but to go the, and like do all of this stuff. Girl, that's I the, enjoyed that's it. That's the lot. problem though, is that she did lose all that stuff and she only ever showed herself having really lost that stuff in volume four. Volume four cinder's my favourite cinder, not just because she doesn't talk that much. <laughs> but it's nice to see it was nice to see her actually be impacted by like her yeah. but she did what happened in volume five she literally didn't give a shit suddenly she was fine again she was like i'm making alliances with raven i'm gonna find out who the maiden is and i'm gonna take the power like she yeah. was totally unaffected no, no, by no. it it wasn't like she was unaffected this was like her comeback turn it was like she went into retirement for <laughs> she, a couple of years a couple of years she was like, she, come like, her. I'm gonna like come five minutes this. no five she, minutes for her being like no. <laughs> okay i'm good now <laughs> no, so she, healed. she was like now i gotta prove myself because i've got the full fall maiden powers so i need to like show that nah. i can really do this nah. but then she <laughs> let herself down because she put all her eggs in one basket and fucked it Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don't really worry, this was March of Doctor Kids anyways. <laughs> okay, neat. I wasn't sure. <laughs> We're just making sure no kids are allowed to watch this. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Kappa. Um, <laughs> 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 Had to mark this stream's not for kids ahead of time. Yeah, um... <laughs> I have to tell you, you it, knew I was coming. the amount of loops I had to go through, it's like, hey, you gotta click this, so I clicked the link. Link didn't work. Okay, let me go to this link. Oh, it still takes me to the classic go live page. Okay, how do I go to the new go live page? Oh, it doesn't have the final cast info. Lovely. Okay, let me go. It was a pain. Fuck that. Yes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's hellish. It's like YouTube, YouTube is fix your system. Great. But yeah. yeah. Um, also, <laughs> uh, so Verif, Verif asked a good question. He said, I wonder if Salem wants chaos. Why hasn't she outed herself publicly before? So do you guys have any ideas hmm. or theories on why that might be? Uh, because she's just not ready. Hmm. Like, maybe her grim forces are just not there yet. Like, she's obviously building them right now. Like, she's building them to attack Atlas. There's no way she's building flying monkeys for not attacking somewhere floaty. Um, yeah. So, like, I think she's just been sort of hiding in the shadows, hoping that her, like, henchman, <laughs> Cinder, <laughs> would, like, do the stuff that she needed them to. Obviously, she's been let down in a couple of areas, so now she's like, right. Also, I need to get involved properly, get my hands dirty, yeah. quite literally, with I some grim goop. <laughs> okay. I feel like as well she because she's basically immortal then there's a possibility that she's outed herself before in the past and everything's went to hell and she's not been able to actually like properly go out with the plans that she wanted to because there was like an uprising but I think we need to find out what her like actual motivation motivation is like Apart from I hate Oscar and he sucks. Yeah, like is it is it truly to just destroy the world like the gods did, or is it like she wants to like invite the gods back and murder them <laughs> like somehow? Honestly, could be anything. It yeah. almost feels like it's the the latter is to like screw over the gods somehow. Mm -hmm. But part of me almost feels like she's kind of given up on the gods and is now just taking it out on Ozpin and it's just like I just want to spite Ozpin and like. Oh, Ozpin yeah. worked on helping the world get together. Let's break that since he worked so hard on that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that'd be some heavy spite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, very she she did throw herself into a, a pool of grim goo, which I know. probably That's left the only thing in her is spite and hate, so. Straight up jealousy for people's actual happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. I'm such a shady. Like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I actually really love Ruby. It's just I can be really shady sometimes. <laughs> well, about Salem. <laughs> but yeah. anything. <laughs> I feel like I've just been on, like, a shade train with the B March and everything else. We're just... I mean, you were pretty positive Bobby. about Cinder, to be fair. I love yeah. Cinder, though. But that's because I built her whole character in my head, and I can't let go of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... Uh... So what do you think about the thought of Cinder possibly getting a backstory that she's from Atlas? Oh. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's why she's, like, not in the opening. is because they're like, don't, I don't want you thinking about Cinder, because Cinder's just going to randomly appear no, and give you the tea. So cool, though. Like, yeah. 
I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would make sense if she was from, like, a noble family in Atlas that, like, she was sort of bottom rung Cinderella. Yeah. And, and then obviously clawed her way to, crawled her way to power. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah. Sorry, Cinder crawls jokes are just really tipped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I'd love to see more backstory for her. I don't want to hate Cinder. It's annoying to hate a character that like shows up so regularly. <laughs> <laughs> I love that gal. I know you do. I love Neo. This is the thing. Now that Neo's in her story, I'm like, oh, thank God I can tolerate her scenes a bit more. <laughs> I want Neo backstory a little bit more than I want Cinder backstory because we've kind of mm. had a snippet, which was like how she met Emerald and Mercury. Like, that's a small little snippet of her backstory. I wish we'd had more of hers since then, though. I know, me too. But, like, because we've had that snippet, I want Neo's backstory more. Hmm. She's Depends like, we already had a little bit of Cinder, give us some Neo, please. Yeah. yeah. And we've hmm. had Cinder. That's all, like, in a small, small I box. I feel like we've kind of had enough of Neos at this point, though, like, that we kind of know. We don't know the exact no. ins and outs, but we know from her it's song. Like the origin story. We know from her song that she was probably an orphan that, mm -hmm. like, Roman found and raised to be who she was. Like, I don't know how much more you need than that. It's quite clear what motivates her. Like, for Cinder, her backstory, why we need to know it is because it's so hard to pin down what motivates her. Yeah, like, more that's... Roman content. Like, why does she want power? Like, what, yeah. Yeah. what made her that desperate for power to go down this path? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, right now she's very flat, which is annoying. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, see, the thing is, is with Cinder, like I said, I've got, like, her whole, like, thing in my head. Yeah, but it's how From much you've, like, for, yeah. For so long. Yeah. Um, that, like, I have, like, her whole backstory in my head. But it's not actually backstory the show's actually, ever given you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the backstory yeah. that I wrote, but yeah. I wrote Cinder for, like, two years of my life. So it's hard to tell, like, where was that actually put in the show and what did I write? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you, you know what you could probably do in the meantime till they show Cinder's backstory canonly? Is you could probably do a cosplay video recreating your your idea of her backstory uh, with Alyssa. no <laughs> <laughs> i've Beautiful. just done one <laughs> give me a break right. let me you rest do, like, a hero but you guys did so good like just imagine like one in story form and like it's yeah yeah well, I'd love to do another one, to be fair, but I'm just... You want to do the heroes. I wouldn't want to do another villains-focused one. I would want to switch it around to the good boys. Yeah. Yeah. Would, would be nice. I actually <laughs> got one for uh, Jean, a good boy, in the works. It's still in the pre-production stage, but I pretty much have my, my crew and stuff nice. set up. Uh, nice. It's really just like, okay, once it's all like written, fleshed out, shot for shot, uh, then it's like location scouting and then recording and outfits and then editing. But, yeah. Yeah. But Sorry, that person makes a great point uh, about Cinder's backstory. I totally agree that her backstory doesn't even need to be sympathetic. I don't care. Like, I don't necessarily want to feel like empathy for her. Mm -hmm. I just want to know motivation. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. I don't need to be like, oh, I feel so bad for her now. Yeah, it's not like the I don't need Demon that. Slayer, I don't need that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think backstories should be to like to answer questions, not to make us relate to them. Which kind yeah. of reminds me of that Joker movie. Uh, it's like I feel like it, uh, you know, it yeah. it didn't do a whole lot to give us a whole bunch of answers. It, it in fact mm. it left a it lot left of questions. It left me with a lot more questions. Yeah, but I really enjoyed. It was more like. It just made him more fleshed out. I yeah. enjoyed the Joker. Yeah, if you view it from the right lens, like I yeah. think that's the mm -hmm. key to mm -hmm. in that film. There's a lot of ways that it could go wrong. Doing yeah. it through the wrong lens. But yeah. If you look at it through the right one. Yeah. It did yeah. really, really good for the Joker. My my lens was situation. just feeling too much secondhand embarrassment and cringe throughout most of the movie. It felt uncomfortable. I felt really uncomfortable yeah. every time he leaned back and his ribs were like. <laughs> I was like, bro, eat them. <laughs> but that was kind of the point, wasn't it? Yeah, it was to unsettle you. Because yeah. he was so unwell. Like, that was the whole point. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, hey, hey. In, in the chat, Lee says um, for Cinder, they kind of hinted in the book that her backstory was very similar to Cinderella's, which is honestly all I needed to know. 
So. Yeah, because they sat down with Jessica Negri years and years and years ago, and I remember they did an interview where they said that her original name was going to be Cinder Aya, like the Spanish. Oh. Yeah. Which is obviously just spelled the same as Cinderella, but it was mm-hmm. just a different... And then they were like, oh, we can't do that. <gasps> but then there's a possibility that that might actually be her name, and she just Wait. changed it to Bog. Wait, no one knows what your full your full username means, and I just realized I forgot what it meant until you said that thing about Cinder in Spanish. What? So your whole Senze saying uh, Yeah, what does it mean? Cinder fall. She's a Cinder stan. <laughs> <laughs> in plain sight. That girl for the rest of my life. Hiding in plain sight. <laughs> the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Shook. <laughs> It's my whole personality now. I can't get away from it. It's just Cinder. I'm, I'm surprised with how much you've talked about Cinder that she wasn't one of the cosplay you brought to RTX. See, here's the thing. <laughs> I have tried so hard <laughs> to cosplay Cinder. Mm-hmm. I just don't look good as her. I mean, you do. What? No. You do. just no. don't. <laughs> like, a, a ch- no. Okay. Your Cinder cosplay was one of the, like... It was like Neo and Cinder were tied for best cosplay in that video. Like I almost didn't recognize you as as Cinder. I, I was like, oh, that wasn't so, that wasn't me. That, that was wasn't Alyssa. you. No. Oh, oh well, that would explain why video? I didn't recognize you. Yeah, that was, that was Alyssa. That's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. She's a yeah. fantastic Cinder. I have mm. cosplayed as Cinder before many years in the past. Okay. There's like one good photo of it. That's it. I think it's just more that you really suit Neo and you really mm-hmm. suit Blake. Like, I think that's the thing. Yeah, I tried, I honestly tried for like three years. I remade the outfit. I like mm-hmm. changed wigs, changed makeup styles. I really, really tried hard to suit Cinder. I just didn't. And then one day I was like, I'm going to buy the wigs for Neo and like sew them together. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, then I've just watched these two wigs and it cost me 50 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put the wig on and was like, Oh my god, this is my calling. <laughs> yes. And I've never the life back. of ice cream and murder. It's a <laughs> hey, that's a great calling though. Ice cream and murder. Like Yeah. The best yeah. of both worlds, you know. Ice cream <laughs> and murder. Yeah. Why would yeah. you want any more than that? <laughs> <laughs> god. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> We're all learning things today. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, it's like that other live stream all over again. <laughs> Bad things happened there. <laughs> I'm I'm a little scared to ask. Yeah, don't it was our <laughs> live stream. It just went. The devil possessed her, and we shall never speak of it again. Yeah, oh Mercury wait. Was in retrograde. And I saw the screenshots hellish. of it. Yeah, yeah she, <laughs> she went a bit mad. <laughs> Someone asked a question. I answered it. In great detail, <laughs> with way too much thought put into that was concerning. It wasn't even like there was loads of thought put into it. It was just I pieced it together very fast, which is concerning. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah. So, uh, speaking of piecing stuff together, uh, the new outfits are going to be revealed tomorrow. I am you're... not ready. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm really glad that, like, they're coming now. We don't have to keep waiting for the new outfits. Yeah, and, me too. Uh, I, I feel like it was a bit surprising, like, yesterday or day before yesterday, when people started panicking, thinking that they were going to just gloss over them getting the new outfits. Um, yeah. Which I was like, but why Why would they? And like, ah. Look, it says they talk about the Aesop, so I'm like, yeah, that's more plot relevant than them getting outfits. You know? And also, yeah. the, the outfits thing is going to be the big thing from the episode. Usually the descriptions are pretty vague in terms of, it's usually yeah. more minor things yeah. from Absolutely. the episodes. Yeah. yeah. I also saw, I, I, I don't even remember who it was, someone saying um, about how <laughs> they hoped that Blake cutting her hair wasn't going to be something that happened like mm-hmm. off-screen. And that they would be really mad if it didn't. But I, I, re- I remember, I think, maybe, that uh, Aaron said that it was going to be something like important. Kind of like along the lines of Mulan and Korra. Like, it's a symbolic thing. It's a symbolic thing. So yeah. a symbolic thing isn't going to happen off screen. Yeah. In my eyes. I just, I think, I think what's going to happen. Now I might be completely 
technically wrong on this one, but mm -hmm. is that like the other characters will have smaller, like shorter sections showing their new outfits and upgrades mm -hmm. because they're not meaningful in a symbolic sense. Yeah. yeah, I think it's that Blake is going to get a longer scene because hers is going to be about like, yeah. well, Yang too because her arms kind of pretty wrecked. Like, yeah. So I imagine they're going to have like a, a scene together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, tis but a scratch. I imagine they'll have a scene together where it's like, oh, your things are pretty broke. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like <laughs> they are like, and they both decide. Well, okay. Blake decides in that moment to. That was actually use. something I was surprised yeah. uh, Pietro didn't yeah. talk about. Like he pointed out the paint job on the arm, not the giant gash in the arm. You know. That's true. I'll... I think he just only recognized it though. As soon as she raised her hand, he was like, "Oh wait, shoot! I recognize that." He yeah. also have glasses, and I have glasses, and I don't notice things. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he just didn't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he just lucked out. Yeah, I I think yeah. with Blake's hair, like it, it they could still like have it pointed out, like the hair transition, like probably her showing like a picture to yang or someone with scissors and then being like are you sure and she just kind of you know yeah. kind of that and then her walking out with the new hair um, yeah i i can't imagine they're gonna go off that one particularly because yeah. it's gonna be a thing for her character a big thing yeah we mm. were talking though and we think that we're gonna get a blush from <gasps> someone we don't know who but we think it might be yang when she sees plot Blake's twist it's hair everyone might, in the like... room because who can't <laughs> <laughs> like who can't <laughs> they're all just like honest to god that's so real everyone's yeah. like oh god she's hot <laughs> yeah who doesn't but it would be like the perfect either. moment to do like another sort of step forward with them without taking it to the next level it's just like <laughs> there's a big blush there <laughs> yeah yeah like it doesn't have to be like a big huge i love you kind of moment yeah. just like small things like when real relationships start yeah it's not mm. always big i love you is right at the start it's well, unless thanks. it's you and you just like, unless it's me take I, things about a million miles per I, hour I, I <laughs> start talking to you and realize that you're the love of my life within a week <laughs> <laughs> libras man it's zero or 100 or nothing in between <laughs> yeah oh, i mean we, we we have had some like small background interactions between yang and blake kind of being cute like I counted. They stuff. looked at each other ten times last episode. <laughs> yeah, because I was trying. I was gonna do a review, but I think I've ran out of time with it. But I was rewatching it and taking notes, and you're like, "I'm just gonna count," and I'm like, "Okay, I'll probably include that." And you counted eleven. <laughs> and I was just ten. like, "Jesus, ten, ten, ten. ten. And I was just like, ten "Wow, times. that was quite a lot." <laughs> In the background or up close, it's yeah, ten times total. They looked at each other. Yeah. I mean, as, yeah, that's pretty hilarious. <laughs> as people pining over each other usually do, they look at each yeah. other and catch each other's eye and then go, oh shoot, look away. I just wish I'd seen the chapter like notes for the animators. They were just like, anytime Blake and Yang are like not doing anything, make sure they just randomly look at each other. Something's <laughs> <laughs> happening over there and they're just like, Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. So, it's over here now. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Makes you realize how deliberate it is when you do it yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, that was that was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> um, also, like with them uh, fixing Blake's weapon, like that would de should definitely not be glossed over either you well know. no because it's the gold piece the glitch no <laughs> it's a glitch <laughs> it's just a coloring glitch you know i i might yeah. be a little bit more inclined to believe that too uh after what just happened to a vlog that i edited yesterday but how did i just notice the boar mask in the background how did i just notice that there? i was like there's, a, oh, yeah. there's eyes staring at me and i realized <laughs> So I just did a discussion off. I couldn't. Oh help no, it. it's fine. I I totally just placed it there on purpose yeah. for videos and stuff to just. It's like the new Gus mask, but yeah, it's it, great. It's the new thing that stares at the camera in the background for people to eventually notice. So I love it. Yeah, no, it's, really it's the 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 gamble the gamble reforged scene. I can't imagine they're gonna gloss over that. It's quite obvious mm -hmm. there's gold in there. 
And if oh, Yang's yeah. arm's broken, they're gonna need like new metal for yeah. hers too. So well, it would be Blake's choice. But in the intro, it seems like for Yang's arm, there's like a weird, like buff thingy sticking out. Yeah, where this scratch yeah. used to be. Um, I'm wondering if that's just like something that she can either like either comes out of the actual panel on the top of the robot arm, or if it's something that she like can just attach. Kind of yeah, because yeah. it is quite bul bulky, like because she yeah. has to roll up her jacket to use it. So I'm wondering <laughs> if it's something that's actually built into the arm, or if it's something that yeah. she attaches. Because I'm making the outfit at the moment, like I've had to kind of really look at the jacket, and it's actually really cool the way that they've designed it. Because obviously it's got the pulleys mm -hmm. with the kind of seatbelt kind of clip. Mm -hmm. which is obviously so that she can just like pull it and then it just pulls the sleeve up and then yeah. she clips it at the top and then it doesn't fall down it won't get caught in the mechanism of her embracelicas it's mm -hmm. so cool it's a lot more convenient than her old like thing in the volume 5 oh. and 6 outfit where she had to like take all her glove covers off <laughs> take her butt cape off yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a whole process every, awesome. every gang cosplayer that did the volume 5 outfit has grunted about it to me at some point just being like this thing was a pain to put together uh yeah. it looks great but yeah i'm kind of yeah. glad to see the back of it i'm excited to wear the volume 7 out i honestly hmm. think my favorite story about you with your yang cosplay is when you went to the vending machines to get a drink and then you couldn't get your hand in because the embracelica was too bulky and you couldn't reach yeah just kept hitting <laughs> <laughs> and i was just like oh uh, nope Kunk, kunk, yeah. kunk. And the people behind me were just like staring. And I'm like, <laughs> sorry, you, you want to help? <laughs> yeah. uh, also, like, what do you think about people comparing her new outfit to Ilya? I mean, no, not Ilya, the, the, the Vernal. 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 Yeah, it does have the little thigh gap, the little mm -hmm. garter gap. Mm hmm. I mean, I don't think it's because she's, like, inspired Yeesh. by her, but I think it's more just, like, they were like, that was actually a really ne neat design idea. It seems like something Yang would probably wear. Let's yeah. bring it back into a non-dead character. Yeah, I feel like yeah. it was just, like, a fr rather than it coming from Yang, mm -hmm. thinking, oh, that outfit was cool, I'd like that. It was just, like, it happens sometimes with artists where they're like, yeah. oh, I've got this idea, and it's like, oh, we've actually used that before, but it's still cool. Like, yeah. Sometimes you design things that have already been made, you just don't know until you've done it. <laughs> well, it's also like, I wouldn't be surprised if Sienna Khan's design starts coming back later on, because oh, they worked so hard on that design for the character to be killed off when they get introduced. That was such a shock, purely because of how much work had obviously gone into the design. Oh she yeah. So and I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> I remember Kim and so many of the animation team tweeting the day that episode came out, like, you guys cannot believe the disappointment we had when we designed her going like, oh yeah, leader of the White Fang, this is going to be great. Let's put all the work into this character. And then we get the script and see that she dies in the scene she, she's introduced in mm -hmm. and we all just, yeah. Yeah, rip, rip Sienna. <laughs> I was so sad because I thought she was so cool. <laughs> yeah, I would like to have had a little bit more time with like, Sienna. You know, that way, in, a, in a way, I liked the shock factor that it had but I feel like I would have been more shocked had I been able to see Sienna's influence on the White mm. Fang and how powerful she was and for then Adam to get to it then yeah take it away yeah I think so too I yeah think that, that would have, that would have been more. a good good impactful thing to do um <laughs> also someone okay so someone's asking and I kind of want to make a jacket pun like oh speaking of jackets uh oh, you know here's the new is it yellow or or blue thing? Um, people thinking that Penny said team or teen. Oh the yeah, uh, the greatest debate of our time. Yeah. Uh, apparently, said... people are saying the captions say teen, which yeah. I yeah. thought I heard teen. I know in my reaction, I said, "Oh, that's interesting." Each teen gets a room. Yeah, but... and in the subtitles on the official episode, it does say teen. Yeah, like yeah. teenagers. Um, but a member Kim of, Newman. was it Kim? Yeah. yeah. Um, said she said, said team. Said it's team. Yeah. Okay. Team. Yeah. I Otherwise, was say... why would Penny say it's, it'll be just like Beacon? Yeah. Because it wouldn't be if it was individual rooms. Yeah. Because it's like, uh, well, with everyone having that team dynamic, like, might as well stick them all in one room, save some space. 
It would have just yeah. been kind of boring to have them in separate rooms. Like, mm-hmm. like they wouldn't have the had... fact that Blake and Yang would sneak in, into each other's rooms at the same time as Ren and Nora were sneaking <laughs> in the hallway. Like all four of them, How like slowly close their door, turn around, see the other four of them. Like, if we don't tell yeah. the rest of them, okay? Yeah. yeah. It's like Yang going to push the door open, and she hears a door open. She's like, "Oh shit!" And it's just like Nora coming out, and they both just freeze. <laughs> and then they just move wordlessly. They even do like a nod of acknowledgement. They know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> or like early in the morning, uh, like Ruby's coming out to get like early, or Weiss coming out to get early morning coffee, and she sees like Blake trying to sneak out of Yang's room to go back to her own. <laughs> yeah. She's just like, "Oh." Sorry, I had to borrow some blankets. It's so cold here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not used to the atlas weather. Uh, yeah. yeah, my favorite would have been if it was Blake or Yang leaving and Weiss saw them. Mm-hmm. Because Weiss would just give them the look. <laughs> the suffering Weiss look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm and happy then, that it's And then they would go stuff. away and like do whatever. And then after they'd gone, Weiss would do like a soft smile and then go on with it. Soft smile yeah. sips her coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank fuck. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Chef's kiss, finally. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I, I really hope, like, as far as ships go, it's Renora and Bubblebee that I'm hoping, like, we get a little bit more development or background interactions with. Mm-hmm. Cause I think you will. So. I think that's the, that's the two that they're, like, going with, for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. I don't know what else you'll get on top of that, but I think those are like your sort of two main romantic pairings there's going to be. Yeah. For sure. At the moment, yeah. There's yeah. maybe potential for further relationships to be, be yeah. developed. Uh, yeah. Lee in the chat is asking, OMG, what if it's the Sokka and Zuko tent scene, <laughs> except for it's Weiss and Yang? I can't remember this. It's it was such a good ten. scene. Okay. No, it, yeah, it's like Suki... Uh, and oh yeah soccer mm-hmm. <laughs> in a tent yeah but like Z- Z- in the tent. <laughs> wait what <laughs> i i don't I remember so- this it's been forever since i've seen this i'm pretty right. sure it's soccer with like a flower in his mouth in a tent and like zuko like goes <laughs> in and is like right okay <laughs> <laughs> clearly the wrong tent <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness me. well then <laughs> Oh, wait, yeah, no, I remember I saw a Tumblr post analyzing it, and they're like, oh, that was clever. It was Sokka literally deflowering um, her. And, yeah, anyway, they, they're they like, <laughs> interesting adult reference in a kid's show. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> um, hey, Inspector Hoop, we're just talking about ship dynamics and comparing them to, like, interesting room situations. Yeah. living situations with yeah, Atlas course. Academy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be team rooms and the team team debate will be over. Wait, actually, yeah. serious question. Is mm. he in Ruby? Like the actual show. Has it been shown or talked about that Blake has nightmares or is that just like a fandom made thing? I think that's like it's, it's, I would, I would assume so, but it's never like actually been shown on screen though. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I was about to say like, oh, it'd be cool. If, like, like if Yang's definitely been shown to that. have nightmares. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I imagine Blake's had nightmares. Uh huh. Like I would imagine most, if not all, of Team Ruby have nightmares. Weiss is the only one that yeah. would question if she does or doesn't. I feel like Weiss would, mm-hmm. but after years of suffering <laughs> yeah in the the weiss the weiss she, she just has nightmares that, about like, not the fall beacon yeah. yeah yeah she's like she has nightmares but they're she doesn't make noises because otherwise she would get like disciplined in her own house <laughs> Ooh, that, <laughs> that'd be so sad I also, Verif uh, <laughs> Verif mentioned he said as far as like secret rendezvous go he was thinking nuts and dolts yeah, because because yeah. Penny Penny's not part of Team Ruby or Team Juniper, so that's true. She would yeah. have to be the one sneaking, most likely. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, like, does Penny sleep? Does she need quarters at all? Like, no, she'll just like shut down in front of them for the meeting. <laughs> she'll inter- and be like, ah. she just stands in the corner. Her eyes don't even close. Yeah. She's yeah. Just... 
<laughs> oh my god, wait, no, she would like step oh, on a charging panel, but it's like that really cool like wireless phone charger one that does like the, the oh, room right, symbol. The yeah, room symbol. and it like lights up. Yeah, yeah. It's like and a, she powers down. A green glyph that she sit, stands on and it glows and yeah. you hear like the iPhone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be so creepy. <laughs> you know what? That I would really love to see. I probably never will. Oh no. But one that I would love to see oh, God. is Weiss and Sun. Oh, sn Sunflakes. Snowflakes? Sn I Wait, think that would be really what? cute. Weiss and Sun. I'm, yeah, I'm Weiss interested. Sun. Uh, like, what, what makes you go for those two? Absolutely nothing. I okay. just think they would be really cute together. I think aesthetically, it's quite a nice, yeah. 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 aesthetically they would think... go nice together. Yeah. yeah. I also think, like, Sun is the right amount of, like, fun and like laid back and easy mm -hmm. energy that Weiss has not really had in her life until she became part of Team Ruby okay. in the greater scale of things so like I feel like and also he's a fondest really to drive her racist father crazy yeah, exactly yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's like a, an open shirt fondest like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I just think they would have a really cute relationship yeah, I there's just that. no, there's nothing there, like to like. Yeah, I that's, know the that's what fan there. fiction is for. True. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's rich coming from me since I shipped nearly everything under the sun within reason. <laughs> yeah, let me put that disclaimer within reason. Within reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ain't no enabling up in here. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. There, there are a few lines where you draw the line with ships. And oh, yeah, yeah. be one you of them. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> like a old line. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. It's not even a line in the sand, it's a concrete wall of no <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trump, Jesus. <laughs> what? It's not Mexico, it's just a bad ship. <laughs> yeah. You, you just uh, uh, sink it or something. <laughs> uh, wait, David asks Sunny about her Cinder and Neo ship. What? No, don't. What? Don't. don't. Okay. I don't want to put in it. <laughs> you don't. You don't want to. <laughs> it's more. I'm gonna get like way too into I, it. You've I also said you. everything. I think that you possibly could <laughs> lie already. But on a different live stream, I will say that the proper name for the ship is Cinnamon Cream with an S for Sin Cinnamon Cream. Oh. Nothing else. I made this ship. <laughs> we built don't this take ship. it away from me. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Speaking speaking of love, what um, I, I think like love is gonna be like the biggest theme of this volume. Like I, I think in the first two chapters we've seen many different forms of love, like outside of romantic love. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I think with Robin Hill we're gonna get some more of that, like because she's yeah, running yeah. the election, so she probably has like a love for the people of Mantle and. You know, doing yeah. what's right. She's gonna be cool. Ooh. She's yeah. gonna be a cool girl. Fun little yeah. nugget, but did you see on Watts' computer, I think in the opening, uh -huh. that he has like an election map yeah. on his computer screen? Fave. Of all the different he's like territories. Gonna, like, yeah. Rig it. Oh. Rig it. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he's gonna gerrymander everything. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> a little political joke. Yeah, well, sorry, people. Get that more. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's an election happening in the volume. It's gonna be hard yeah. not to not be political at some point during this volume. I feel, cause like, yeah. yeah. So I mean, we already have like um, authoritarian. Uh, author yeah. How do? You, I can't authoritarian. Pronounce. Yeah. Yeah. We already have that happening. Um, yeah. You know, and and we're even seeing like some of Ironwood's like reasoning for it, and he's very much the the means justify the ends which is kind of a scary scary thing to think about being yeah. all machiavellian but i am low-key terrified as soon as someone posted that i was like please god no that ironwood planted a voice like tracker like a something recording device on crow's back when he hugged him and i'm just what? like i hate it yeah, someone let the ship be. Someone said that, and I was like oh my god please no because i don't Dude. know maybe he didn't trust ruby's answer and was like right oh. i need to see what's actually going on here and i'm like oh my god if that's Lord true betrayal oh yeah my gosh. that that wouldn't have been a sinking ship that would have been like a ship that just exploded yeah, yeah. no chunks left 
it also gives me the fear, like, because they're getting all of the new outfits, new weapons and stuff, that uh, there's maybe microphones in the outfits. In the new outfits. Yeah. The, well, yeah, cause th- it, that too. Because from yeah. the, the gif we saw on Twitter, it does look like they received the outfits rather yeah. than went out shopping to get the outfits. Yeah, um, like cause... I read a fanfic that had like the hidden microphones in it, albeit it was very gay and not explicitly safe, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, you just but, shame like, yourself on another stream, that's why not? fine. <laughs> it's a running theme at the moment, I might as well just embarrass myself everywhere. But like, that planted the idea in my head that there is a possibility that they maybe have put well, they're like Michael. more. They're more. They're not as trusting of them as they seem to be. Maybe that yeah. they are like more actually surveilling yeah. them. Like they well, them also, the if they're in the back. the quarters at Atlas mm. Academy, those rooms are probably bugged before they even got in. Yeah, exactly. that's what I wonder. Is like how strict they're actually going to be with them? Because yeah, it's I love Ironwood, but part of me is like, did he just give her the relic back so that? There yeah. would be no suspicion of mm-hmm. like they're not of him yeah. mistrusting them. Yeah, that was like the olive branch of like you can trust me because I trust you, but it's it's a red herring. Dude, uh... you're giving me uh, I you're giving me trust issues because like I really want to believe the best in Ironwood and be like oh yeah. you know like even though we don't agree with his methods you know we could see that he has like a great love for the greater good and is willing to kind of like sacrifice his self image. But now I'm like man if you guys are right he's really manipulative and kind of should mm. die um. i don't know if he <laughs> should die but like i think his motivations are like really good because he does yeah. just want unity and peace but it's obviously like his methods like he's yeah. kind of willing to do whatever is required including like obviously to a detriment to himself but he is like well, willing okay, to do whatever exactly. is needed he's willing to do anything <laughs> including turning mantle into the real life version of 1984 like with that mm-hmm speech constantly looking it, it's a lot like, uh, it's like north this. korea like what's going yeah. on there like mm. they all have that speaker where you could hear the government talk to you in your own apartment you can't turn it off but you could turn the volume down yeah or yeah. like in 1984 like you literally can't turn your tv off and they can watch you through your tv mm. like you are not permitted to switch off it has to be on yep all the time because that's how they monitor you and Holy how they crap. get propaganda in your face yeah <laughs> yeah like that's what it's looking like for me at the moment which i yeah. love because i love a reference like that and i love 1984 <laughs> but it's scary to actually see it yeah because yeah, i've no. never seen any film based on it i've only ever read the book man you've not played a lot of video games have you <laughs> no i was gonna say there's there's been quite a few video games but i also think uh, michael b jordan is in a 1984 uh, amazon series what it, wow, it came out like this movie? year yeah that's random as hell. <laughs> yeah that's michael already. b jordan you know the genlock michael b jordan is in that 1984 oh. yeah i think he plays one of the firemen or something <laughs> that's random that's so wild i had no idea yeah that's cool i'll have to look at that yeah so i do enjoy 1984 i'm just terrible at video games oh hey <laughs> so lesha or is it is that an i it might be I, aisha maybe? aisha um she's asking do you guys think winter and robin were teammates wild theory but i think that winter might be one of the top class huntresses what the happy huntresses? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah. She's like their inside man. Thing. She's their yeah, inside think, man yeah. informant. Yeah. I think they're about the same age, to be fair. So yeah. she probably knows her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could have been former teammates. You know. Exactly. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. Like at least oh, dang probably it. in this same age group. Lee just corrected me. Uh, Michael B. Jordan is in Fahrenheit. Uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, four fifty one. That's the one where oh, they burn books. Oh, yeah. That's why I said, yes. oh, yeah, he's a fireman, because he burns the books. Ah, similar, similar right. thing, but, yeah, my bad. Another good one. Yeah. Oh, and, and Brandon in the chat as well said that. Um, Everyone's just like, I must correct. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad they did, you know? I don't want to yeah, be absolutely. spreading misinformation like That's true. some other <laughs> people on the internet <laughs> who talk about Ruby. That shall not Ooh. be named. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
the, also like uh, Nikolai is saying like he thinks Robin is the Winter Maiden. I think the Winter Maiden is going to be a lot older than Robin. Yeah. Or yeah. The the fact that Crow said she isn't exactly a spring chicken. She's mm-hmm. not. I've seen Robin springing. She yeah. was springing in that opening. Springing all <laughs> nah, she's like an old as fuck lady. Like she's in a care home. She's in her mind. <laughs> yeah. That would be really interesting to be fair, a maiden that like is losing their mind. Yeah. And has like no control like, oh, over her power mm-hmm. power because she's like not in control of her mind. Oh yeah. man. That'd be kinda That'd like be cool. um Professor X and Logan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. sad movie, I know. <laughs> I just, oh, uh, yeah, that yeah. would be cool. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Me. Uh, I'm going to guess, like, Crow knows all the maidens. Because yeah. at, at least everyone excluding the, the spring maiden. Um, yeah. Because, you know, he helped Amber. He said the spring chicken comment, meaning he must know her. Because for a while, yeah. I would have thought, oh, maybe... If he only knows of her age, mm-hmm. um, what and like Penny and Ironwood are like, oh yeah, she's safe. She's she's here in Atlas. I I kind of wanted to think like maybe Maria could have been secretly the Winter Maiden, but that would have yeah. been too OP. But that's what we were saying too. But also yeah. like, if you think about it, given someone with the silver eyes, the Winter Maiden powers would have been the perfect disguise because they would already be powerful enough with the silver eyes to never even touch their winter maiden powers that's true yeah Mm -hmm. but i feel like that's something that maria would already like would maybe have disclosed or because i don't think she's Mm -hmm. in the in the situation where she's wanting to hide anything from them no i'm just so fearful for for maria like surviving this volume every time i think about it i'm like i think she's got it die every time i think about it i think it's more likely yeah yeah me too because it's gonna be like such a terrible thing for everyone in the group like Mm -hmm. obviously there's not a lot more that she can teach ruby about silver eyes but she can still teach her a lot about controlling it and how to like use it to its best potential but i think the person that will feel it the most is yang because this is the first person that's actually appeared in her life and stayed long term that's mothered her in her adult life. Yeah, in a sort of a brace of motherly way, but a motherly way. A motherly way, nonetheless. Yeah. I think if we lost Maria, that Yang would take it the hardest, actually. Ruby and Yang. Secretly. But secretly, because Yang likes to <laughs> hide her Yangs, yeah. yeah. Hmm. But I just feel like, I, I don't know, even the fact that Maria wasn't in the group shot at the end, when she was in the group shot at the end of Volume 6, is opening, it's like, why? Concern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's she at, dog? <laughs> I mean, part, part of me wonders if she's taking more of a backseat, and if I remember correctly, Pietro, he isn't in the group shot at the end either. But I feel that true. That is true. But yeah. I feel I, like he wouldn't have been in any way. I mean, I I kind of took that like last group shot as like them going to confront the battle or like the conflict, and Maria and him would not be people you'd send out in the conflict. Possibly. You know? I just can't help but think that as much as like getting Penny back is this great thing, like there has to be a a part exchange for it. Mm-hmm. it's not like there's actually a literal exchange it's just narratively there's like this there's a loss because there's been a gain yeah like yeah. maybe maybe atlas will fall and all that but i feel like maria's the one you could lose without having a huge impact on mm-hmm. the characters narratively but emotionally yeah. a huge impact there would still be Plus, we haven't yeah. had a major death since volume three yeah so we're kind of overdue at this yeah, <laughs> overdue. So help me, if they hurt Penny again. <laughs> Honest to God, yeah. same. <laughs> yeah, it's like don't, don't do, don't make me lose Penny again. I'm, I'm not strong enough. I can't do yeah. it again. Like if you're gonna take Penny away from me, like honest to God, just knock me out. Like I don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah. Like if if Penny dies in an episode, I want Miles and Carrie to break down that door and shoot me in the back of the head while recording my reaction, cause like. Just <laughs> <Penny>. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, at least you could get them done with murder. I will get a lot of money for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, like, um, Thunderstorm in the chat, she was asking about Tyrion at mm-hmm. the end of the episode. 
Um, I think he was planting grim goo. I don't think he was killing anyone at the end. Oh, I think. Oh no, that was a big puddle of blood. That was a lot of blood. <laughs> no, a big, I... big, big blood. Was that blood? Because it looked like the goo for Grim that they no, come I'm out of. I'm pretty sure it was blood. It looked like blood to me. It did look like a lot of blood. Yeah. I've never seen that much. I, I agree. The quantity was a lot. Um, yeah. But part of me was wondering. It was. Well, if it is Grim goo, think about it this way. Okay, sorry. I was looking at the last shot of the episode before the credits hit, but. That's okay. To me, like it, so we see it mostly through like a security cam footage, and then like it coming out from underneath the door when he left. Uh, mm. Like how how did the Grim get in, uh, mantle with so much security around? You know There's how a... did they get into the city grounds unless Tyrion is planting Grim goo, a, yeah, around the city. Yeah, they that there's a hole. There's a hole in the city wall in, in mantle. mantle. There's a there's a breach in the wall that's letting smaller Grim in. Is what I I think was in the news, the screen that had all the news information. Okay. And one of the bits of because I when I did my review for the episode, I had to like look at stuff like that, and I spotted that that it said there was some kind of break in the barrier which was letting Grimm into Mantle. Right. Okay. Um, presumably that's something to do with Watts and Tyrion anyway. Yeah. But they've not fixed it. And that's yeah. why Grimm can just get in. Well, not Small only have Grimm. they not fixed it, but apparently their almighty yeah. military isn't able to like prevent Grimm from entering the city by planting some guards in front of that wall. You know. Yeah. It's, it's weird because yeah. you wonder just like how much that like the council above are just oh. not are trying to like demoralize mantle <laughs> it just seems so cruel the way that they treat them yeah it's I mean, not great or what if the hole in the wall is a distraction from the actual cause of the grim yeah that's true it could be a a red herring isn't yeah. it they like hey know, if we blow up this hole in the wall but we're secretly planting grim across the city via goo then they wouldn't suspect that someone's planting Grimm. They'll just be like, oh, the hole in the wall, that's where they're from. I just wonder how sustainable it is to carry around Grimm goop, you know? Like, because yeah. mm -hmm. I've only ever, you'll never see Salem or other Grimm deliver it, so I'm like, could it just be bottles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was thinking that, like, it was in bottles and barrels, you know? Yeah. But I don't know why, I, that just reminded me of the tweet that was like, thinking about the airport jungle juice and it's just the pour all your liquids here and it's just grim goop yeah, <laughs> grim goop. yeah. Get put around get it turns into one of those airport. squid orb things like no 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 back to liquid <laughs> no. Not, no. wow yeah. that would be a weird scenario <laughs> yeah tsa is like we're not paid enough for this <laughs> they just like yeah yeah to walk out. And watch just like slides them some notes, like just let this one through. <laughs> They're like, "All right, I'm already paid badly. <laughs> we'll take this tip." Oh, ran random question that's TSA yeah. related, but it's also cosplay related. Uh, did you? How did you guys travel with your like gamble and shroud and stuff? Uh, um. So, gamble was in the suitcase. Okay. But Gamble so is only made out of foam okay. and one small piece of wood. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. So that wasn't an issue. Um, your robot arm and Ember Celica? Yes. It travelled in your hand luggage. Yes. <laughs> because I was scared of it getting crushed in my suitcase. Which yeah. is totally understandable. Yeah. yeah. The year bef the, the last time I was there, though, in 2017, um, one of my really good friends, uh, Ghost Machine, on Twitter, um, he got me like a Glock replica gun. Okay. Um, that he like painted for me to make it look like it was a handgun for Blake and had like her symbol on it. Um, so that had to go in my suitcase to travel back home. So I had to put like a a, a written note at the top of it. It's like. <laughs> I know that you have to open this. Thank you for doing like such a good job with what you do. I promise it's just a prop replica. Like there's an orange tip on it if you want to check. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. like, we still do that though. We just wrote a note on the top saying there are prop weapons in here. Yeah. Like, feel free to check it, that yeah. they're prop weapons. It didn't get yeah. opened on the way 
there, but it got opened on the way back because we forgot to put our padlocks on our suitcases. So <laughs> they they like, bust those condition. off now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's like specific padlocks that you have to buy. Like they're yeah. advertised everywhere, like in the UK when it gets to summertime. They're like, okay. these are TSA approved because they there's a specific like key that they can use. Otherwise, they will just like cut it off. <laughs> okay, because I I knew someone that had like their padlock broken and then they like ripped open the bag and they had to like duct tape it back together. Which is like, what yeah. the heck? Um, yeah, I I just asked because mm-hmm. I'm traveling to DC in February for a convention mm-hmm. and I'm gonna be having like almost a forty inch long foam sword with me and I'm like. I don't know if this will fit in a suitcase. Of? What do I do? So, but you can I mean, put it in oversized luggage as well. I don't know if there's an extra fee, yeah. but if it's just a little bit too large for your suitcase, you can have it stick out a little bit and wrap it in some bubble wrap and put it in the oversized luggage. There might be like Maybe. a twenty dollar fee for it or something, but they'll put it through. Yeah. Okay. That that's good to know. I I was gonna look it up later, but I was like, you guys have experience traveling with cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too many. Uh, yeah. Alrighty. Well, I think we're practically at the end of the show now, and I know it's super late for you guys, so thank you. That's okay. <laughs> that was cool. It was good fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, I I hope you guys sleep well in time for chapter three. And oh yes. yeah tomorrow is the day we've been waiting for mm-hmm. <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah no oh, I, that was probably a pun i was gonna open tomorrow's reaction up with anyways like yeah with the uniforms yeah. and everything i'm like give us give us the new outfits <laughs> and also the new dorm room i i want to see a new dorm room decoration scene where they like remake the bunk beds and stuff but boy yeah, and yang just so push their beds cute. together Instead of bunk bed. <laughs> Pure. Dokies. <laughs> Big dokies. Yeah. Yeah, that would yeah. be wholesome as hell. I just, I don't know how they're going to divvy up the episodes. Like... No, same. But I'm probably going to wake up, like, not super early, but early enough that I can start tearing apart that jacket that we bought so I can make your bomber and then your cosplay is, like, done. So that I can actually have, like, the full thing almost mm-hmm. for, like, when the episode airs. I'll just be like, yeah, hey, look, I got the new yeah. costume in time for the episode. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll get it done that quick, but I'll get it done you quick. You will. No, I won't. <laughs> you have to. You can have all the faith in the world, but it won't. Do it. <laughs> it's like you put too much faith in this. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. fine. I can just wear the the overalls. You, the overalls are done. I can wear them. They are cute. Yeah, I can't wait to see you in them properly. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. No also, everyone that's watching this, either live or post. In the description, I do have the link to their CMV if you want to watch that and subscribe to them. Highly recommend the watch or at least the listen. It's a good song. But yeah. give them Neil give them that you. view somehow, guys. Um yeah. <laughs> we also have the behind the scenes coming out on Sunday. Sunday. Behind the scenes. Yes. Yeah, which is just basically Chaos. us <laughs> memeing around. As which is as really any fun. behind the scenes should be. I yeah. I'll definitely yeah. be sharing the heck out of that because <laughs> you're so it, it was such good production value. I was just like yes we need more of this in the fandom <laughs> like yeah. critical role has it like till the like forever mm. like there's all yeah. all these cosplay music videos but ruby we need more of yes yeah. Please. absolutely i mean at the very least i can guarantee that the behind the scenes when you watch it you will see the chaos energy that is shared between every single person that was included in that production <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, with the Torchwick, I could definitely see the chaos with him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you just chaotic. embody Torchwick, and Torchwick is just chaos embodied. So. Yeah. I yeah. actually think the most chaotic was our cameraman, Shark Boy. Yeah. He a... has high chaos energy <laughs> behind the scenes, you'll see. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't really see him because he's behind the camera, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. He did a good job, though. Very excited. You do actually see him in the CMV for like two seconds. It's neat. <laughs> right in the background. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Well, thank you, chat. Bye. Bye. Bye.